Thomas Goss with another discussion about craft. Um, in our last episode, we talked about uh, what is so important about craft. I mean, why is it essential if you're going to be a professional orchestrator to have a level of craft? Okay, now we are going to discuss the actual elements of craft that I feel are so important. First of all, um, something that a lot of people think about in terms of orchestration is they think vertically, okay? And that is an important thing. In order to balance the instruments and to get the level of texture and, and all those other kinds of things sorted, you do need to think vertically, okay? That, that is an important thing. However, not enough people think about the continuity of each instrument, okay? I think that, I think that is really essential. Um, an example of this is um, let's say that you've got a part for a trumpet player that's very demanding and they've got absolutely no time to warm up. It's very, very difficult to count in. They don't know where they're at and then BAM, they do it. Um, sometimes uh, composers uh, in the 19th century would write things into their symphonies that would actually allow players to warm up. So by the time they got to a big splashy part, BAM, they would be able to do it. Okay, so that's just one example um, of a very, very complex issue, which is just the horizontal continuity of each part. I mean, you have to think about each player in the orchestra. They are not just there for your enjoyment as an orchestrator and as a composer. They are there for their own enjoyment, okay? And they want a piece of music that they can dig into. So horizontal continuity takes care of that. If you have a part that really makes sense, you're thinking both ways, not just vertically but horizontally. Okay, So I would say that's the first element of craft. That's something I look for in a score. Does the actual part make sense going all the way through? The next thing is um, a deep intuitive knowledge of instrumentation that respects the performer's strengths and limitations. Okay, This isn't exactly what I was just talking about, but this is more so that you have to be a geek of each instrument Okay, um, in a way that each player is a geek of their own instrument. Like trombone geeks are really, you know, they know as much as there is to know about trombone. Well, you have got to know as much as you can fit into your head about trombone without actually being a player. Okay, that really, really helps when it comes down to asking them to do something which, say, is what they would call an extended technique. Okay, um, or even just asking your know, demands over time. Once again, going back to horizontal continuity. Um, you know, how much are you asking technically from the player? Um, how much are you asking emotionally from the player? Will they actually be able to pull it off? Um, an example of this is Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony. It is incredibly hard for an orchestra to make it, to make it all the way through that symphony uh, convincingly, just because the emotional demands are so extreme. <laughs> Another important element of craft is practical literacy of orchestral music, okay? This includes score reading and a familiarity with orchestration techniques and music through history, all right? So not just the splashy modern works of the 20th century, uh, some of the film scores of the late 20th century to the 21st century, which may be really influencing you right now, but it also includes uh, older examples, you know, the uh, late Romantics, maybe the early Romantics, uh, classical period music, say, uh, from you know early Mozart to late Beethoven, and and then you know also all of the things which people don't consider to be orchestration, like say Bach cantatas and Vivaldi concertos and all those other kinds of things. You really should study everything, just every use of the string orchestra with soloist. Um, and all of those things, just going back down to viol consorts of, of say, the um, early Baroque, uh, late Renaissance period, that's all worth studying, and it all makes you a better orchestrator. Another very, very important element of craft is to have a well-trained inner ear, okay? Um, you, you know, it's it just saves time. And this is all about fixing whatever it is about yourself now, okay, that will make it just much, much faster and smoother for you to go through your job once you get to the point where you actually have work. Okay, now if you do not have a well-trained inner ear, forget it. Okay, you just, you know, go back to square one. Um, you know, take a few courses at university. Um, it's important to be able to pick up a score and just look at it and see it, you know, visually 
just hear in your mind what is going on. Eventually you get to a point with your ear where where the whole visual thing and the whole audio thing just sort of combine. You kind of see it and you don't even need to hear it. You kind of feel what it is supposed to be um, and it makes sense to you. Okay, It's the same way that somebody would speed read uh, a, a page of text and just, you know, you know, you, you would not be hearing people talking at high speed and, you know, chipmunk voices in your head, but you would be able to get the entire story. It's that same exact thing, that you have to be able to internalize music. Um, and you have to be able to digest music and just, you know, just suck it up, okay, like a vacuum cleaner. So, so that's a real important thing. If you do not have a well-trained inner ear, this is just really going to be a hard job, okay? So go take care of that if you haven't yet. Um, now, now these are sort of personal elements that, you know, like of your own personal resources that you need, okay? Um, now let's talk about the more practical resources, uh, the more practical elements of craft that you have to possess, okay? <laughs> The ability to deliver a proofread conductor score and intelligently laid out parts, okay, that's really, really important. First of all, in terms of the conductor score, um, a score is not just a document about, you know, what your idea of a great piece should sound like. Um, it's a set of instructions for the conductor, okay, it's saying, you know, this is how you're supposed to make this music live. And if you are not taking the conductor into account, um, then your piece is never going to get played. Or if it does, the conductor is not going to be able to follow it very well. And um, maybe he'll actually be resentful about the fact that he has to conduct this um, total mishmash of notes. And, you know, and he, he might have a really bad attitude about your piece. The best guide is to look at some of the great engraved scores, some of those Dover editions we've talked about and just to see how the pages are laid out. Um, when they do split systems, you know, like um, a smaller system here and a smaller system down there, um, what, what's the aesthetics of that? You know, how is it easy to read? How far apart are those systems? All those things are really, really important. Okay, but, and then let's talk about parts, okay? Um, some of these programs nowadays, Balius and so on, which, which I happen to use, um, they're getting better and better at figuring out how to create parts very quickly. No, okay, now, very quickly does not mean automatically, okay? Automatically means you don't have to do any work on it. Quickly means it just saves you time. Instead of having to actually hire a whole other person to do your parts, just dial up your uh, part extractor, or I guess Sibelius has got automatic parts now. Well, that's not good enough. You have to proofread each of those uh, bits of, of paper, okay? Um, you don't want your dynamics hanging out on the margins. Um, you don't want to be missing bars and things like that. So Bailey's does that from time to time. And how embarrassing would it be to find that out uh, in the middle of a rehearsal? That, um, you know, the, the main solo that you were really, really looking forward to hearing is actually missing from the trumpet part, okay? So all this stuff has to be looked over. Um, Try to get somebody else because you're too familiar with your own piece. But or try to maybe trade with another composer is a good way to do it. But um, really, the composer should take responsibility for that. <clears throat> okay. Now a few last things. We're going to talk about this in an upcoming chapter. Okay, and that is um, the ability to think about uh, the orchestra. Okay, as not just as texture but also as kind of a balanced engine where all of the elements are working with each other rather than against each other. Um, and then to see what function each part has as you go through, okay? That's going to be the subject of an upcoming chapter called Texture, Balance, and Function.